You know, one of the things that we see online now and is trending that I'd love to get your perspective on is this idea of toxic positivity when there's too much positivity. And I know many people equate positive psychology with just the pursuit of positivity 24 seven. We've sort of touched on this a little bit, but what are your thoughts around toxic positivity? You know, whenever I talk about uh, happiness or positive psychology, I always start by talking about the role of painful emotions. And notice I don't call them negative emotions because with negativity, there's already a value judgment there. I always begin by talking about the role of sadness or anger or anxiety or envy or hatred and how they're part and parcel of every life, including by default of a happy life. And that's important to emphasize uh, precisely because of what you pointed to, AJ. And um, many positive psychologists are on this. And, you know, the, the, um, you know, the motto is... Um, you know, smile all the time, or uh, don't worry, be happy, or um, or um, eliminate negative emotions, um, and um, and that's not possible, nor is it desirable. You know, I often have a um, a thought experiment that I offer, and 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 I also add that this may not just be a thought experiment that may become a reality 10 years from now. Imagine you had a machine that you could go into and that machine would automatically eliminate any painful emotions. You could go into it, your kids could go into it. Um, so, you know, you're feeling down or your child comes home from school feeling down, just go into that machine and you'll feel all better again. You know, a little bit like a Woody Allen's uh, Orgasmatron. Um, so would you want that machine? And, um, and my answer would be that it, you know, would be nice to have once in a while. Um, but if we had it uh, accessible all the time, if we could live according to that ideal and be positive and happy according to that definition of happiness all the time, um, that wouldn't be a good thing. Because um, think about it. And most people, if you ask them to reflect on the times in their lives when they grew the most, when they learned the most, that have been most meaningful uh, to them, they would usually think about difficult experiences, not uh, happy-go-lucky, joyful, ex polyannic experiences. I, the be happy all the time or to have this machine sounds like a Black Mirror or Twilight Zone episode, and we all know how those go. Yeah, they <laughs> tend not to end well. Now, I'm curious, are there any non-negotiables for you when it comes to happiness in your life? Just do not do this if you are working towards happiness. I know many people have thought about what to do, but are there things that we're doing consciously or subconsciously that are robbing us of that happiness that you put on your non-negotiable list? Yeah, my non-negotiable, personally, that is. My non-negotiable is, um, um, you know, important uh, dates, for example, in terms of uh, relationships. Um, it's... Um, it mostly has to do when work detracts from relationships. And relationships, I mean, whether it's with my, my wife, whether it's with my children, extended family, and uh, uh, intimate friends. Uh, that comes first. And everything else has to revolve around that. Now, with that, you know, I work hard, I'm ambitious. Uh, you know, I used to, uh, not so long ago, travel a lot. Um, and yet, top priority in words and in deeds, relationships, and, um, and things have to revolve around that.